Hello and welcome back to the WWMT Worldwide Movie Trivia Season 2 Opener. That's right, we got some new rules now, we got some new blood, some fresh competitors, and with me in the co-host chair to help kick these things off, I've got Case the Assassin Cornelius, uh, the guy who is ranked one spot above me. What are your thoughts going into tonight's match, the first one of Season 2? I just realized the hosts are all caps today. Oh, that's a bad joke. Uh, but the thing is, today we have two reactors uh, here who um, like like to react to stuff. Uh, the question is, though, can they also play? Because they've seen others play, but now they're playing themselves. So the question really is, how do they know their actual trivia? Today it's about them playing the game and other people may be reacting to them. Yeah, I'm looking forward to this. I just am wondering uh, what they're going to do today. I'm, I'm wondering too. And the funny thing is, yes, like you said, they're fellow reactors. They're both good friends of the channel. And I'm curious to know what they got to say to each other. So you know what? We're going to cut to a quick little video where we show just that. Here we go. Well, this is great to take part in World Wide Movie Trivia. This is something I've been hoping for for a very, very, very long time. I've been a big fan of you guys, and you know, I've just been sort of like having kind of a mutual appreciation of each other in the Schmodown reaction videos. I'm super pumped to be doing this today. It feels good to sort of get back in and be talking to you guys again. And to finally get the chance to play a good friend, a fellow reactor, David Crossan. Oh, it's going to be really easy to destroy him. I'm not worried about it at all. <laughs> He's a really nice guy which means this is going to be a very easy match because we all know nice guys don't last. Yeah, I'm definitely looking for it. I have no problems cutting my, cut my friend's throats. <laughs> At the end of the day, I'm still going to be JTH. I'm still going to be the best. Um, yeah, it, it's, I'll be lucky if I demolish him, actually, in, real, in reality. When this match is over, David Crossan, you will be ruined. Any last words for Jeremy? Good luck, buddy. Good luck. You're gonna need it. <laughs> and okay, I guess uh, I guess they had some stuff to say to each other. I, I guess there must, must have been some bad blood we we didn't know about. But uh, you know, Case, are you ready? To, are you ready to start this off? Uh, is the Pope Roman Catholic? I'll take that as a yes. <laughs> so. For the first time in season two, let's do this! Introducing first, making his worldwide movie trivia debut from Retro Gaming Rewind. Give it up for David Crossan! And his opponent, also making his worldwide movie trivia debut. From the Movie Trivia Schmodown Fan Reaction League and a good friend of the channel, give it up for JTH, Jeremy Hastings. All <laughs> right. So, gentlemen, round one is going to go like this. As, as you guys all know from the new rules, each competitor will receive six questions. Each competitor will be getting the same question. You will write your answer down on a whiteboard or a piece of paper or whatever you have to write with. You have 15 seconds after the question is asked to answer. When the time is up, you will show your whiteboard and say the answer as you show it. Each question is one point apiece, and there is no stealing in this round, obviously. Jeremy, are you ready? I'll take that as a yes. Ready as I'll ever be. Sounds good. I'm ready. I'm good to go. <laughs> All right. Let's go. <laughs> All right. Your first question. Under the category of animated, who provides the voice of Barbara Gordon in the Lego Batman movie? Hmm. This is a really I good... I love this movie. Yeah. It was really good. I didn't see this one yet. Can he, Ooh, can, he still, can he still try to pull it? Let's find out. In oh, crap. five, 
four, three, two, one. Pens down. David, did you get anything? I got nothing. All right, Jeremy. Well, it helps that the video is right there, right behind me, because the answer is Rosario Dawson. Oh, wow. got it. <laughs> Ooh. Slightly controversial, possibly. <laughs> that is correct. I mean, it's it's really nothing we can do anything about. <laughs> True. So. You know, we, 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 we can't, uh, you know, fly over to his house and be like, hey, no. <laughs> but all right, Case, take it, take it away. Guys, no, damn it. Put that video sec- away. Your second question in the category of classics. What was the name of Terry Malloy's brother played by Rod Steiger in On the Waterfront? And this is my weak list. Classics. I've never seen this one. You could have been somebody, Case. You could have been a contender. <laughs> instead of a bum. <laughs> <laughs> hey, at least Star Wars is still, is still a thing, right? Eh? Yeah, that's true. That's true. In five, four, three, two, one. Jeremy, what you got? I think this is right. I put truffle shuffle. <laughs> David, what uh, can, you we, got? Can, can we give him a point for making us laugh? We cannot, yes. sadly. Ah, uh, uh, this is wrong. I just wrote Bob. I have no idea. Ooh, you could have been some. I could have been somebody. Charlie. 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 All right. All right. Third question: the category of action adventure. In Indiana Jones. If I got a point for every time I made you laugh, I'd have 35 points by the end of this match. Oh, dear God, <laughs> yes. Yes. Yes, you would. That's true. Your third question in the category of action adventure. In Indiana Jones and the Temple of Doom, what song does Willie Scott perform a Cantonese rendition of at the nightclub? <sighs> not a fan of this scene, not a fan of this movie. Okay, I, and I, I get that, but. <laughs> I, I love this movie. What? Oh, yeah. Well, dude, I love the whole trilogy. And sure, this is like the lesser of the three. It, By far. Can you repeat the question? Yeah, yeah. Can in, you repeat the question? Yes. In Indiana Jones and the Temple of Doom, what song does Willie Scott perform a Cantonese rendition of at the nightclub? It's an American song, but she sings it in Cantonese. What all the more inspired me about the scene is that they do it inside where none of the people in the restaurant can actually see them. It's an homage, dude. Just let, just let it go. Just let it go. <laughs> in uh, five, four, three, two, one. I'm scared to ask if anybody wrote anything down. <laughs> oh, boy. Uh, <laughs> I'll go first, I guess. All right, David, what you got? I grew up putting on the Ritz. This is so wrong. That's a great guess, but unfortunately, no. Uh, Jeremy? Uh, does it look like a face? <laughs> what? <laughs> <laughs> Two question marks. No, we were looking for anything goes. Anything goes. Guys, your question in the category of 80s movies. In Ghostbusters 2, what famous landmark comes to life carrying the Ghostbusters at the end of the film? Ooh, they're both hopping to it. They might actually know this one. And Everybody Ghostbusters knows. 2 was... Eh. Yeah. I, 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 did, I didn't hate it, but I, that's also because I don't love the first one as everyone else does. Neither do I. I... Yeah. As, as you and I are both uh, bracing the doors because people are going to kill us with t- pitchforks and torches. In five, Send me your tweets! <laughs> four, three, two, one. Pens down. Jeremy, what you got? Uh, Statue of Liberty. That is correct. correct. Nicely done. David, what you got? Statue of Liberty. That is correct. Woohoo! All right. Finally got a point. Yes. Let's see if we can keep this. Let's see if we can keep this going in the category of comic book movies. 
What was Ajax's real name in Deadpool? My favorite movie of 2016. Oh. In my top four of 2016. I love it. Pretty high still. Oh, yeah. You know, it's kind of funny. Pretty much everything that wasn't a blockbuster that came out last year was great. <coughs> Pretty much. This was a blockbuster. Yeah, but, well. Rogue One was a blockbuster. <laughs> Most of the other blockbusters kind of sucked, though. In five, four, three, two, one. Jeremy, what you got? Uh, I put Francis. That is correct. That is correct. done. David. Francis. All right. We're getting some points racked up now. This is what I like to see. Okay, take it away. The, be the best part about that name is that he spells it out with dead bodies at one point. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, guys, your last question in round one in the category of comedy. In Harold and Kumar go to the White Castle, what celebrity do they pick up hitchhiking? God, I love this scene so much. Never seen this movie. <clears throat> I recommend seeing it just for, like, this, this particular actor and what he brings to the film. It's so funny. I think it takes place in Jersey too, right? Yes. <laughs> in five, four, three, two, one. David, what you got? NPH. That is correct. Jeremy, what you got? I put George Decay. Oh, oh tie game. Tie game. Three to three. What a damn. Like, last time we had a debut match this good, we had a former champ come out of it. Hey, now. <laughs> well, I'm not, I you know, just, you know, but, but yeah. between the, the title match and, you know, some, some of the other debuts, it, it, round one's been a little bit of a struggle, but, you know, three for three out of six, that's pretty good. That's pretty good. I'll take it. <laughs> All right, gentlemen, we come into round two, and it will go as such. Each competitor will choose a number between 1 through 10, which pertains to either a certain movie category or personal slash rival's preference. You will be given the category names ahead of time, but not the number they're associated with. And you may pick twice, but you must stick with the second option if the first one is not to your liking. You will then be given four questions worth two points apiece, though multiple choice is available for one point, and there is stealing in this round. David. Categories in this round are Classics, Disney, DC, George Clooney, Martin Scorsese, Fantasy Sci-Fi, Horror, and Romance. Please choose number between 1 through 10. 8. That is the category of Classics. Would you like to stick with that or go for something else? I'm going to go for something else. Give me 7. All right. I will have Case reach the questions for Fantasy Sci-Fi. All right. One of my favorites. All right, David. First question in the category of sci-fi fantasy. In the desolation of Smaug, how did the dwarves attempt to assassinate Smaug initially? And remember, you can go to multiple choice. Yeah, I think I'm going to go multiple choice on this if, one. If only you had joined us for that watch long. <laughs> <laughs> Just kidding. All right, your options are A, shooting him with a black arrow. B, crushing him by blowing up the ceiling. C, poisoning a sheep carcass. Or D, burying, burying him alive in molten gold. That was tongue twisted. I'm going to say D. That, that is, is correct for a point. Great. Your second question in sci-fi fantasy. In Dune, the most important type of resource is known as the, melange, as the melange. What type of resource is it? The spice? Two more Twice points. is correct. Nicely Two points. Done. Right, your third question. Kristana Locum played the first female Terminator in Terminator 3 Rise of the Machines. What was her designation? You mean like her, her model number or whatever? Yep. Yes. Um, you can go for multiple choice. G2000. Ooh, Jeremy. Incorrect, still... Jeremy. Oh, yeah, I forgot. Is it TX? Oh! That is correct for two nice. points steal. Wow. That was in my head. Like, yeah, nice. Nicely done. 
Oh, David, for your last question in sci-fi fantasy. In everyone's favorite Star Wars movie, Attack of the Clones, finish Anakin Skywalker's quote. Ugh, not again. Oh, um, oh, damn it. All right. As much as as much crap as I do give this movie, I do actually find that scene pretty funny. Multiple choice. I often saw A. I hate it when this happens. B. I just finished finished modifying it. C. Can this day get any worse? Or D. Obi Wan's gonna kill me. Obi Wan's gonna kill me. That's, That's correct. correct. For another point, seven to five. Okay, man, that. A two point steal might uh, might might that was big. might might, might help him. Jeremy. <laughs> but we'll have to see how Jeremy does in his go at round two. And Jeremy, the remaining categories in this round are horror films, Disney movies, classics, George Clooney, Martin Scorsese, romance, and DC. Please choose a number between one through ten, and seven is off the table. One. Really? Yeah. Fuck me! Yeah. Oh. oh. That is the category of Rivals <laughs> Preference. David, <laughs> you get to choose his fate. I'm going to give him classics. No! <laughs> yeah. Okay. Well, best of, best of luck. Best of luck, Jeremy. Your first question in the category of classics. <laughs> first question. What was the name of Dorothy's uncle in The Wizard of Oz? Can you repeat the question, please. Okay. What was the name of Dorothy's uncle in The Wizard of Oz? You can go to multiple choice. In uh, multiple choice. All right. A. Zeke. B. Hickory. C. Henry. D. Hunk. I won't say what thing success. <laughs> C. That is correct. Correct. Nicely done. Point. Uncle Henry and Auntie M. All right, second question. I really wanted it to be Hawk. <laughs> <laughs> yes, David. I know you like. I know you like, you like to talk about yourself, but uh... <laughs> Stanley Kubrick earned his first Best Director nomination for which film? I love this movie. Multiple choice, please. Okay, A. Paths of Glory. B. Doctor Strangelove. C. Spartacus. D. Lolita. B. Oh, he's Josh McCooganing it right now. Tie game. Indeed. Nicely um. done. <clears throat> what was option B again? Doctor Strangelove. Doctor Strangelove. Nice. Third question. That was my pick too. What was the name of the island where the events of Jaws take place? Call this a classic? Uh, yeah. The new 1970s. Yeah? I mean, and shit, it was the first blockbuster. Of course it's a classic. I get multiple choice. Okay. A. Nantucket. B. Cape Cod. C. Amity Island. D. Martha's Vineyard. Why did you say that name? Sorry. <laughs> because I hate you, Case. That's why. In five. Dan Tuckett. Ooh, David, chance to steal. Amity. That is correct. correct. He takes the lead. <laughs> if you're 
Final question in the category of classics. Who directed Once Upon a Time in the West? God, this movie's also fantastic. Ooh, I remember it looks... seeing it once. I don't remember the movie, though. Aww. I was too young. Ah, fair enough. I just, I just saw this maybe a week ago, and I don't remember. Uh, multiple choice. A. Sergio Donati. B. John Ford. C. Sergio Leone. D. John Sturgis. Sergio John. Sergio John. <laughs> Gee, it's almost like you wrote this question, Case. What? Uh, really? Do I write questions? I had no idea. <laughs> D, John Sturgis. Oh, David, chance to steal. Sergio Leone. That is and correct. That's another point. Oh, he got his two points back. Done. It's still close though, seven and nine. It's still close. And and literally, as we've seen time and time again, anything can happen. As we now come into round three, and it will go as such. Once again, as you guys recall, a little bit of a change up here. So our two competitors will receive three questions apiece worth one point. It is usually a simple category, and I'm looking for a simple answer. So and you have 10 seconds after the question is asked. So, not too much pressure or, or anything. And gentlemen, I regret to inform you, your round three is quotes. I'm asking you to name the movie from the quote given to you. We will start with Jeremy as he is behind, and then it will go to David, it will go back and forth until the end of the round. So, Can I ask uh, Jeremy this yep. time? Jeremy, your first quote. Ready your breakfast and eat hearty, for tonight we dine in hell. The movie was released in 2007. And 300. Five. That's correct. correct. Four point. All right, nicely done. What was that one? 300. 300. 300, nice. David, your first quote. Bloody hell, son. You're about as useful as a cock-flavored lollipop. It was released in 2004. And it was released in 2004. 2004? In... Five, no, I know this. Four. Three. Two. One. Super Troopers? Oh, sorry. Good guess. We were looking for Dodgeball, a true underdog story. Ah, damn it. All right, Jeremy, your second quote. They call me Mr. Tibbs, and the movie was released in 1967. In and five, four, three, two, one. We were looking for In the Heat of the Night. All right, David, your next quote. Louis, I think this is the start of a beautiful friendship. Movie was released in 1942. 1942? Yep. In five, four. Grapes of Wrath. Ooh, sorry, looking for Casablanca. <laughs> uh, That's the last never line. saw that. Never saw that movie. I guess he didn't join us for our watch along of that either. No. Yeah. <laughs> Heck, I didn't even join for that. Shame anyway, on you, shame on you, Case. Jeremy, your last quote in round three uh, to tie the game. Actually, I feel the need, the need for speed. Movie was released in 1986. Yeah. Five, four, three. Two, one. Oh no! Looking oh. <laughs> for Top Gun. Uh, I thought that was a, thought that was a given. Yeah, I, so too. <laughs> well, I, I guess that's what you get for insulting uh, '80s movies. You, you forget these things. But David, to potentially take a two-point lead. Your last quote. 
It wasn't God that gave me this face, James. It was you. And the movie was released in 1995. And I love that movie. I love this movie so much. Is that Lawnmower Man? Oh, looking for Goldeneye. Oh. Sean Bean says that to James. Ah, okay. One of the best Bond movies, period. And the greatest, that was a good one. And, and the greatest Bond game of all time. I will fight anybody who says otherwise. <laughs> <laughs> all right. <clears throat> so, with this, now the score is at 9 to 8. Close match. I'm liking this. As we come into the last round, the IMDB round. And here is how it will go. Each competitor will be given the year, genre, and three plot keywords of a given film. If they know the answer from that information alone and they guess correctly, they will receive five points. However, if a little more help is required, they can ask for either two plot keywords or the director of the film, and the total possible then goes down to three points. And if they still can't get it from that, they can ask for either one last keyword or the main actor of the film. And the total possible goes down to one point. Now, there is stealing in this round. If the opponent can steal on the five, it is worth three points. If the opponent can steal on the three, it is worth one point. And if the opponent can steal on the one, no points are awarded. So, David, because you have the lead... Please choose either movie number one or movie number two. Movie number one. Okay. Case, I will have you ask Jeremy for movie number two. All right, Jeremy, your movie was released in the year 2000. Its genres are action, adventure, and thriller. And the first three plot keywords are airplane, virus, and thief. I'll have to give you a five count. Five, four, three. Two more plot keywords. Your next two plot keywords are Cure and Sydney. Didn't go for the director. Interesting. And remember, he can go after one last keyword or the main star. Or the main actor, yes. And five, four, three, two, one. Can I get the, the main actor? Okay. Oh, yes. Uh, the main actor is Tom Cruise. Ten seconds on the clock. In five, five four, four, three. Mission Impossible 2. Correct, correct for one point. point. Ties the game. Okay. Right. Well, David, you just have to hit any of them and you win the game. Alright. Yep. So, David, best of luck. <clears throat> Your year is 1997. Your genres adventure, comedy, and family. Though I'm a little surprised by that last one. And your first three plot keywords are New York, Top Secret, and Technology. I'm the BS plot. At 97. Can you repeat the, uh, the clues again? It's, I know it's 97. Yep. Genres are adventure, comedy, and family. And your first three plot keywords are New York, Top Secret and Technology. I need the next two keywords, please. Okay. Your next two keywords <clears throat> are Terrorist and Autopsy. Families in one of the genres here? Uh, yeah, it also surprises us a little bit. <laughs> yeah, a little, uh, bit, a little bit. I'd focus more on the first two, adventuring comedy. 
in. You can go for a last lead actor. I need the lead actor. The lead actor is Will Smith. Oh, so um, I guess that's... I guess that's Men in Black. And your winner! David Rossen! Men in Black indeed. Men in Black indeed. One of the nice. best theme songs come out of the 90s. Men in Black Family? Men in Black Family? Yeah. As we said, I, I, IMDb I, is flawed. IMDb is a little messed up, I think. But, uh... Okay, well, let's uh, cut to some post-match interviews with our competitors today and go. Hi, guys. No special cameo from different Take 3 members, just the co-host. Uh, here today with our winner, uh, David Crossan. You just won your first match in Worldwide Movie Trivia. How does it feel? It's crazy, man. I, I was not expecting to actually win today. Um, I kind of came in just... I didn't have the mindset of, of a winning mindset. So I wasn't totally like expecting to win, but I came in and uh, the questions just went my way. And uh, Jeremy was uh, he was an awesome competitor. I think just as a spectator, I think this would have been a really good match to watch, even though the first round kind of sucked. But uh, the fact that we were kind of stealing each other's points and, you know, eventually we racked up some good points. So um, I'm excited. I'm pumped. Yeah, well, the first round you didn't suck. You got three and uh, Jeremy as well. So that was really close. And then you get to choose his category in round two. Uh, what went through when you heard that you got to choose his category? Oh, that was music to my ears. That was just, that was absolutely fantastic. Because I was worried that he was going to hit something, <clears throat> you know, obviously that was going to favor him. But when I saw Chris's face, as soon as he picked his number, I think he picked number one. As soon as I saw Chris's yeah. face, I was like, yes, this is awesome. <laughs> I, I knew exactly what the category was. So, um yeah, and I knew classics would probably be a bit of a challenge, and I thought I would probably have like a little bit of a chance to steal some points with classics. Which you um, did. And yeah, and it kind of worked out that way. So um, yeah, I'm happy about that. Yeah, because first you got to uh, do your category, and he managed to steal two points, which actually made it a lot closer. <laughs> yeah. Uh, when he stole that point, uh, were you at any point in this match worried that he might take the match? Yeah, yeah. At that moment, when I realized that I didn't choose multiple choice and he actually stole two points, um, I realized that was a really big screw up. Um, I shouldn't have just like, you know, jumped on trying to answer that question. I just had a mind slip. I forgot it was multiple choice. So next time, you know, lesson learned, I'm hopefully not going to make that mistake again. Well, uh, once again, congratulations. And we'll just go to Jeremy's our unfortunate loser today. We had a winner, but we sadly also have a loser, Jeremy Hastings, who still managed to score nine points in his first match. Uh, Jeremy, uh, uh, how did you experience your first match in World Wide Movie Trivia? Um, went about as good as I expected it to. Um, got quite a bit of questions wrong. Got some right, but uh, managed to keep it very respectable. But uh, in, in the end, uh, JTH learned uh, that he's got a whole lot more to learn. So, uh, it goes, um, well, there'll be next time. But now I'm wondering, is there anyone uh, who is 0-1 uh, or 1-2 uh, out there that you know who, we, who you would like to face or just one of the newbies coming up? There is one person I'd like to face. It's funny that you brought up my gifts because I think it's only fair that we give the Take 3 community the match where the Ruin Bracket gift came to be. It happened the third wild card match of the WWMT tournament. It involved one Aaron Turner. You cost me my perfect bracket. You created a legend. It's time for JTH and Aaron Turner to get it on. Let's <laughs> find out if all this was worth it. Come on now, let's make it happen. JTH, Aaron Turner, let's go. All right. So the host of the rundown versus uh, one of the bigger reactors uh, to the Schmodown. That, that's funny. Uh, that, that might be a match that we uh, need to uh, set up soon. Because I think records do line up. Um, yeah, but no, anyway, uh, still, you did a good job today. You scored nine points, uh, which is one of the highest scoring losses, actually. People have won matches uh, with nine points, so it's nothing really to be ashamed about. Uh, and I'm looking forward to your next match. Uh, so, Chris, make that happen. Okay, well, um... That, that was interesting. There were some different words getting tossed around there. Uh, Case, final thoughts on the first match of Season 2 for Worldwide Movie Trivia. Uh, 
both actually did really well. Well, a very close game. Uh, they scored a couple of points, like 10 to 9. That's a good, uh, pretty good score for a debut. I mean, if anyone is giving them crap for, ah, oh, it's a low-scoring match, this is not low. This is, this was a good close match between the two of them. Like, uh, they stole each other's points in round two, which was uh, pretty pretty good because it kept it close um, uh, right up until the very end. And uh, congrats to David. If, if David can get another win and if Jeremy can pick up a win in his next match, uh, we might have a, a couple of good mid-tier players who could work their way up to being in the upper echelon in this league. So we'll just have to see it where the future goes with them. But until next time, guys, thank you for watching. Please click the like button, leave a comment, subscribe to Take Three Productions, and for my co-host, Casey Assassin Cornelissa, I'm Chris Skywalker-Doman. We'll see you guys at the next match. Take care!